For these continental scale regions, this is a runup of greenest square kilometers as seen from space. See video text for methods. We start in Europe. On median filtered Landsat imagery of the Crimean Peninsula, you can see a spectrum of water colors along the northern lagoons. From west to east, color transitions from distinctly pink to bluish green to green associated with a gradient of water chemistry and algae composition. Zooming way into the eastern part of this lagoon system in what is called Savish Lake, a snapshot of high resolution imagery shows the very green color of this water close to the long spit separating the warm shallow lake from the adjacent sea. Then we go to Africa. In the nation of Djibouti at the northern end of the Great Rift Valley is a volcanic crater lake called Lacassau. Due to exceptional evaporative losses, the salinity of this lake is about 10 times that of the sea, making it one of the world's most saline bodies of water. It's a closed basin in an extremely hot desert, with its shoreline being the lowest land level elevation on the continent. The greenest square kilometer falls next to the lake's massive halite or sodium chloride crust surface. It may not look that green on the high-res imagery, but ground level photos consistently show the green surface color. Next greenest is Australia. Right against the beautiful southern coast is a small lake called Lake George. It's part of a chain of lakes acceptable to accelerated eutrophication due to human nutrient inflow, causing algae blooms and exacerbating invasion of aquatic weeds. The lake is very shallow with an average depth of only about one meter. It's a site of recreational activities such as windsurfing. The green coloration looks to be a result from bottom sediment reflection, algae blooms, and other aquatic vegetation. Then North America. In the rain shadow of the California Sierra Nevada mountains is closed basin Mono Lake. It's a saline desert lake with an unusually productive ecosystem based on brine shrimp. Infamously known for its rapid decline from water diversions and a major legal battle that ultimately forced the city of Los Angeles to partially restore inflow. The greenest square kilometer is near the shallow northeastern lake margin with the widespread green coloration derived from abundant algae and carbonate rich suspended and bottom lake sediments. Next greenest is East Asia, central China, and what's known as the Quaran Playa. Formerly a single lake, now a massive salt flat divided into several sections of smaller salt lakes. The basin is heavily exploited for its huge deposits of valuable salts, minerals, and rare earth reserves. Some parts of the basin are starting to be protected with a national park and so it's starting to support regional tourism, which is understandable with its incredibly stunning and unworldly environment. Then South America. I couldn't find any specific information about this remote high elevation Andes Lake. It's another closed basin in a hyperarid environment, so likely another saline lake. It's the smallest lake feature in this list, really only captured because the lake falls neatly on a cell center of the square kilometer grid of this analysis. The lake is surrounded by spectacular fresh volcanic features, presumably with its coloration associated with the lake sediment characteristics and algae growth. The last three sites have all involved big steps up in elevation, and surprisingly from here we have another step up in elevation to the greenest square kilometer on earth in West Asia. The Bui Lake is a high elevation, hyper arid, hyper saline lake in Tibet. The lake gives its name to a lithium carbonate mineral discovered here in 1987 and of which has been mined here since about 2005. It's one of the major lithium sources for China. The lake has two sub-basins, with the southern one being a semi-dry white salt pan, and the northern part an incredible lake feature, which is the most consistently true green feature on the planet. Our final map of greenest square kilometers by region, all of which are nutrient-rich or hypersaline lakes, Terrestrial veg just doesn't have the same amount of relative greenness compared to this type of algae present in these water bodies shown. And where it does, it's too patchy to win out at the kilometer square resolution of this analysis. I'll do a separate analysis of NDVI, which should better capture the terrestrial vegetation. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.